right. You know what? Enough's enough. I can't take it no more. I've been grinding for too damn long. Here we go. So I've gotten myself and Pirates level 18. Milo is level 17. I've gotten all the equipment I need. I've gotten most of the equipment Milo needs. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of dropped the ball on Pyra's uh, equipment. But I've been grinding for so long. And I just barely finished my upgrades. So if nothing else, we're going to grind in the Cave of Truth itself. So let's get going. Also, by the way, fun fact, apparently Grim Fowls, right? They can paralyze. So that was fun to learn. I realized no one was taking their turns and it was just a bunch of wagon birds. And that's the reason it's because they literally just um, can't. I also got Pyra's sleep spell upgraded. Sleep level two cost six MP, but now it affects all enemies in all groups on the screen so it's infinitely more cost effective than the other one i'm curious though i never checked so sleep level two so yes it reduces the mp by one and it has the chance to affect more enemies so it's more efficient in the mp economy as well as the turn base economy so so far pretty good Pyra is still taking more damage than I would like from Minotaurs, and I know that's going to be a problem later. But again, there's at this point just not much I can do about that one. I'm just going to suffer because I can't keep wasting Pyra's MP. She doesn't have that much, and there's no way to get it back in the middle of the dungeon. We're making good progress. I want to make that perfectly clear, right? Like, we're not, like, falling behind or anything like that. It just means now it's time to actually start the actual dungeon. We've been, we've been putting it off too long. So I finally figured out what Muddle does. Muddle is basically confusion from Pokemon. It means enemies are a lot less likely to hit me, and it also means there's a small chance for them to attack each other as well. So it is useful. I'm fucking asleep. Apparently they can put you to sleep by touching you. This is the only issue I'm running into with this game right now, now that we're at this point, is I just don't have that much MP to spend on every single combat, and every single combat needs a spell cast to make it doable. Which means we have less for the dungeons, because the dungeons are getting steadily and steadily further away as we go and there's no way to just jump into a dungeon real fast after you heal and there's no way to like set up camp for example and rest we are just like we just gotta press onward i'm still annoyed that my speed is becoming a real serious problem i do not like the fact every enemy gets to go before i do all right here we are the Cave of Truth. Looks like there's no primary air quote on air quote gimmicks here. A lot of it really does seem to be mostly just um, getting to the end again. We'll see if that thought holds water. You're not my boy. You're not my boy at all. Where's my boy? So this is a sea stallion. They do a bunch of damage. They do two attacks per turn. And they do a lot of damage. It... do. That wasn't so bad. Uh, but they can get bad. They have the opportunity to do... Uh, Two free spells per turn. That sucks. As far as I can tell, we're past the point of chest beaks. So in theory, we should be good to start looting chests again. You'll be sorry! Pyra's still taking a lot of damage. I'm really hoping we get lucky down here and get a... 
Get the fuck out of here. Are you serious? I don't think wisdom seeds do what I think they do. Uh, no, I'm good, actually. Apparently, no, I'm not good. Apparently, we're sticking around. We've explored one... Less than one quarter of the dungeon, by the way. We have barely even started. And now we come to our first ever... Spinner! So walking on this is going to rotate us and send us forward. From what I'm reading, it is going to rotate you three times to the right. And then you take a step forward. So basically, when you approach a spinner, it will immediately face you left. Wherever you're looking right now, to the left of the screen, you're going there now. So let's experiment. Yes. So this also means that now, there we go, but there's also treasure there, so. The Clodhoppers, got a new Fortnite skin, I want to vomit. I need to have nine mana available at Pyra at all times to cast Aggress. So if Pyra ever falls below 9 MP, we might as well just die and suffer the consequences. Again, we're at a rough point in the dungeon right now due to our level, the strength of the monsters in the area. In fact, there's just no reprieve whatsoever. We're getting to that point now where unfortunately I kind of have to fight everything to keep up, which means as soon as the game throws a monster at me one after the other after the other, I... I kind of just have to take it with a smile and say, thank you very much, game. I appreciate the opportunity. $50. That's insulting. Even the weakest encounters in the area right now give me more than $50, game. We're still not even close. Oh my god. At this game time, at, oh my god. At this point, the game's taking the piss, right? Like, get the fuck out of here. I still like Shiny in the Darkness. I want to make that clear. Fuck. I want to make that clear. I'm having a good time playing the game because I enjoy traditional old school RPGs and everything like that. But we're getting to the point now where the game, now that we've gotten this deep in, has taken our progress very personally. I'm gonna have Milo cast, uh, no, sorry, it has to be Pyra. Pyra has all the utility spells. It's becoming a real serious problem. If I can get Pyra up to level 19, I will consider it fine to leave the dungeon for now. But Pyra has to hit level 19 for that to happen. I took one step. There's so many toadstools. Again, we've gotten to a point now, when the game started, monsters very rarely did a status effect. If a monster had a status effect associated with it, that was a rare, intended to be difficult situation. Then, most monsters had uh, status effects. All right, natural progression, and we have three party members. That makes sense. Now we're at the point where Every monster can inflict a status effect, and the game has decided that we need more of them. And if I'm not mistaken, once we get later in the dungeon, the game will once again decide to start sending more of them. I'm almost happy seeing a familiar face. It's a side block. How much is a slow sp It's two. I can justify two MP. That's all I can justify. Also, I believe I now understand one of the things about the levels of the spells from what I can gather. Certain levels of spells, like for example, a higher level sleeve spell, it affects more. What the fuck did I just find? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Fire Staff.
Pyra have a fire staff? Pyra, what does the fire staff do? It's worse. I got very excited, but no, it is objectively a worse item. That sucks. I was very excited. Oh, yes, level spells. Um, If I am not mistaken, a spell's level not just denotes certain maybe like how many targets it can hit. It usually also denotes a um, like kind of like a range of levels from like a spell can hit. So, for example, I've been seeing situations where I'll cast lower level uh, sleep spells and it won't work on tougher enemies, but I can cast a higher level sleep spell and sometimes it will. Same things like slow and everything like that. So I think that's why the level system works the way it does. I think. Don't quote me on that. I have no physical proof of, you know, determining how the spell system actually works. <laughs> Tomb Walkers. Uh, I didn't check for the other guys, but I am curious. I believe they can paralyze. They're worth a lot of XP, though. So. Last heal spell of the... I fucked up. I wasn't keeping track of my numbers. And Pyra is at 7 MP. Aggress is 9 MP. Pyra, you still have not leveled up yet? So yeah, I guess I was just wrong about those numbers. Okay. Um. We gotta leave. I don't think I brought an angel feather. I have an angel feather. Pyra's paralyzed, so I can't use the angel feather. But I have an angel feather. Okay. We may stay a little longer, but just a little longer. So here's the thing about the death grins from my reading. They don't do anything. Death grins are not dangerous inherently, but apparently they have a high crit range. So they crit more often than they just hit. And when they crit, they do 30 damage. That's what makes them dangerous. Bull snouts. Well, again, Pyra's out of spells, so might as well just beat the shit out of him for a while. Bull snouts can cast heal. That is the only thing that makes a bull snout dangerous. I actually almost appreciate the simplicity of the thing. Oh, I was wrong. I literally just read the guide a little further. I really should have done that. Um, yeah, I'm not about to go get this chest. I was about to go get one. We're not doing that because apparently chest beaks have been replaced by ghosts, which give a fuck ton of experience. They can also cast a spell and one shot somebody. So I'm good. That does not sound like my good time right there. I'm, I'm not going to bother. I'm good. We're just going to move on. All right. Shab the bots a lot of bull snouts. Game, I think I think there's enough of them. That's enough bull snouts. It's also bad because if we damage them intermittently and they don't, uh, you know, die, they're just going to heal each other. So we really need to be one-shotting them. There's another chest down there. So we can ignore that as well. Hello. Death rattles. Aren't death rattles actually the scariest part of the dungeon? Never mind. They have a high attack power, but otherwise, they're kind of just a bunch of bitches. All right, so we're now getting to the deeper depths. We are not a high enough level to be here, from what I'm seeing. Made some good progress, though. It's not as bad once I learned I don't need to open chests because they're all very dangerous. I can skip most of them. It still sucks, though, because enemies are very fucking strong. So I'm going to go back. The Ostrich. Are the Ostrich dangerous? All right. Uh, Ostrich are the most dangerous right now, and I don't have any MP to attack them. So right now we just got to kill them the hard way. So here's how Ostrich work, apparently, because we killed them and actually managed to stop them before they got to do anything. Ostrich 
Fuck that guy. The Ostrich can attack as one, and the more of them there are in a combat encounter, the more damage that does, so... Yeah, like that. So again, they must be dealt with sooner rather than later. All right, we're in a good spot to grind where it's not terribly dangerous yet. So I'm going to, I, I want to do all my grinding off screen so we could just like move on, but I'm going to be walking back a little bit and this big mega long hallway, this I'm going to get we're basically going to fight until I have no more MP, no more nothing whatsoever. I'd say this is probably the safest place to grind right now for enemies that are strong enough while not killing us. Surprisingly, they do a lot less bullshit than uh, the previous areas. Like, they're stronger in terms of stats, but they don't, like, you know insta-kill and things like that. they don't immediately paralyze by just looking at you they don't flex muscles as often or like that i think at this point i'm just developing stockholm syndrome for the new monsters because the old monsters are bought like just bastards finally god peace there will be no peace, only the embrace of chaos. What does peace do? Oh! For the next 30 steps, no random encounters. That is legitimately very good for me. This is just my life now. Beating the shit out of bull snouts. We're getting back to that point where Shining in the Darkness is becoming the worst version of itself. And I guarantee once we become strong enough, that's like, you know, we're able to just kind of plow through most enemies, kind of like we're doing right now, but like more consistently without having to worry about MP and stuff like that. It's going to become boring again, and then the difficulty is going to start to slowly ramp up. And once that happens, we're going to be like, oh, shit, this is a lot more like fun now and everything like that. And then it's going to become overwhelming. It's going to become bullshit again. It's just going to rinse and repeat the cycle. That is most likely what the uh, the review opinion of Shining of the Darkness is, at least for me, is it has a lot of really good ideas. And it is a traditional turn based RPG on the Sega Genesis. You don't see that very often. But it has a very particular gameplay loop. Which is an exercise in frustration. It also means getting access to story beats takes a long time. Simply because there's a lot of combat encounters. And there's no real good way to skip them because you need all of them. Like once we get to the point where these guys like all die in like one hit we'd be at the point where we can pretty much justify running away from every single combat encounter. We are certainly not there yet. We're still struggling to get Milo to level 20. I can't make this another grinding episode. I can't do it. We have to do something. We have to make some progress. In order for that to happen, one of y'all motherfuckers needs to level up already. Preferably both of you. Look at that. 24,000. Why does Milo level up at such a slower rate than everybody else? Once Milo is out of MP, that is when we like have to tap out because again, we cannot justify going any further. Fucking finally. Spell increase quick to level two. We don't use quick. We might, we actually might start depending on how things go. Is that why I'm so slow? Has the game intentionally reduced like the main player speed? With all due respect, Pyra, why did Blast only do seven damage? 
Now, to be fair, I'm used to taking one damage per monster, so seven and eight per attack with these blasts. That does suck, don't get me wrong, but you took surprisingly little damage. <laughs> but anyway, I think it's entirely... There we go, Jesus. It is entirely possible that the game has slowed me down to give Milo someone to use the quick spell on. The only reason I suspect that to be a possibility is because I was watching some videos about a game called Parasite Eve, and in that game, in order to justify, you know, one, a quick and, like, you know, ability, but moreover, to encourage the player to take more damage to make combat seem harder, the main character's speed is greatly reduced compared to everybody else's. You move incredibly slow. I currently have no plans, by the way, to play Parasite Eve, but if you'd be interested in that, let me know. Suffers no damage game? What are you on right now? If it just said I missed, right? That would have been fine. It's the fact that it words it as attacked but suffered no damage. Can't even be grossed out by like clod hoppers or death grins, whatever anymore. I I've seen things like I have I have peered into the abyss. I've seen toadstools. That really does just all but confirm the suspicions I've been having about the game with the blast spell and everything like that. Magic does not take stats into account. It has a set damage value or set damage ranged value, mind you. And it only cares about that number. You cannot make spells more powerful by just getting more levels. That doesn't work that way. You have to level the spell up by getting more levels. Why did you two do that? That might be my least favorite thing about the way the game handles groups, right? If two monsters are in a group and all three players attack that group, it will split our attacks up between the groups. All right, Pyra. Get us out of here. Oh, thank God. If we didn't have that angel feather, I would have cried. So tell you what we're going to do immediately. We're not even going to go to the tavern first. Fuck that. No, we're going back to the alchemist and we're getting a new uh, angel feather. All right. We have stuff to sell because monsters were really dumb and start dropping like good stuff. 570 for the wood staff. Take that. That's free, basically. Um, We do not need the woven robe. $150. That's fine. And the fire staff. Well, now I'm hesitant. Like, is it good? Is that a good item? Also, I don't even know if you should be the one to take this. Like, hold on. Okay, so the wood staff is just a straight upgrade. However, it allows me to cast a blaze level three when used. So that would mean Pyro always can have, if I'm not mistaken, a third level blaze. No, no, hold on, hold on, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm coming back, I'm coming back. But we're leaving town because this does not require me to go into the dungeon's depths because Pyra is out of MP. She is completely drained. So I just need an encounter anything. This demands my immediate research. Perfect. Um, I just realized defend is not a thing you can do. I believe Pyra's the fastest. Well, I can't defend, which is irritating. Uh, item. Use the fire staff. Did it consume the fire staff? No, it did not. I was worried it consumed the fire staff. 
Okay, we are not selling the fire staff because that means even at zero MP, Pyra can always have a third level blaze spell on hand, which I don't even know if she can actually cast a third level blaze spell right now. Can you, Pyra? You won't tell me. All right, now that I've done my research, we may go to the tavern and rest. Pyra now has 108 MP. She actually has more than Milo, which is, it's just we require her to like cast so many fucking spells. Where is the magic hood? Oh, hood, hood, it's a hat. Thunder helmet. It's on sale. The guide thinks this is gonna cost $10,000. It's half off, I can afford it. Yes. Pyra, there you go. Uh, just for my own sanity, right? How much would a wooden shield be? There it is. Pyra should apparently have the wood shield, but... In fact, we got her armor, or like hood for so cheap. What does that take her defense up to right now? Because her defense is 77. That's what's killing us. This takes up by 10 to 87. That's definitely going to help, even if it's not perfect. I need 5,000 more experience. Milo needs 5,000. Thousand Pyra needs two thousand. With a sudden flash, the fire staff burns what? I did not read what it said. Is it gone now? It's gone. Fuck. I thought I could keep it. All right, whatever. Whatever. What the fuck ever. Message. I mean. I mean, with this newfound knowledge, I don't want to waste it. All right. So the fire staff should only be used in an absolute emergency. Like, there is actually nothing else we can do if we don't use the fire staff. We're going to die. Otherwise, we leave it alone. Grimwald takes no fucking damage. Fuck you. He's a goddamn wall. How did I miss? I have had that exact same conversation when I play Dungeons and Dragons in the past, where I'll have a player ask me, Hey, so, um, can I, like, attack the door? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, what I rolled a hit? It's a fucking door. It's not going anywhere. Pyra does a surprising amount of damage now with her new level up. It's actually very nice. Again, it'd be nice if we all focus down on one monster instead of spreading our attacks out, but that's fine. God damn it, now Pyra's asleep. Now I'm asleep. We head up this way. Now this is going to be very confusing. This is definitely the most confusing part of the dungeon. So we're not going down that way. We go up the... Um... Don't I have another wisdom seed so I don't have to use a spell? No, I don't. That's fine. I'll use the spell, because something here is not right. Oh, the walls come falling down. Basically, just alternate in this pattern for a while until the game tells you to stop. Like that. That was spooky. I thought my map was wrong, but no, actually, just... All right. I 
they still go first. What's the point of a speed factor if I can't go first? I thought there was something strange about uh, the fact that mentors kept casting that spell on their allies and they were taking no less damage and they were not going before the Minotaurs. I think that spell might actually just be broken. Did two of our attacks just do no damage? You're, it's ooh, game. Ooh. Just shut the fuck up. Stop that. What about you look at that? Can't get through. Maybe the Orb of Truth will help us. Fake wall. Anyway, as we were, dungeon's not over yet. I believe the enemies get stronger here. I think we're about to find out. If we fight the same bullshit, then no. Yes. These guys kind of suck more than she does, so... The Jacko Butch are the uh, most important threat right now. They still only do one damage, for the most part, but they do heal each other, which is irritating. Okay, so the game keeps telling me, right? Hold on, before I say anything, caught by surprise. Before I say anything, let's see. I haven't done anything. I haven't done. He actually gained one health. I saw that, right? You saw that too. They came into this battle hurt. I think the AI is falling apart. And to be fair, so am I. Uh oh. There's an empty ninja. Let's just fill it with the false idol. Where's the fucking false idol? Where the fuck do I find the false idol? Shit. I, ma I missed it. Oh, fuck. Southeastern corner. I thought I checked all those. Oh, there it is. That's when I was told to, like, not but fuck. <laughs> is it worth starting the dungeon over just to get to that point? Yes, the answer, by the way, is yes, it is worth starting the dungeon over. We need the false idol. As far as I can tell, it is not optional. And it gives me a chance to heal up real fast. Maybe get some new equipment. I saw that, 4,000. We have enough for the wood shield. Give Pyra the slightest bit more defense. I'm going to sell the fire staff, by the way. I was very excited about it, don't get me wrong. And I am excited. But the fact that it is uh, expendable, I just don't see myself in a situation where I'd like be super hyped up on keeping it. Yeah. No. Thank you. I, I sold you that morning star. How dare you? I sold that to you. I don't think I can afford Milo's um shield, the Mardu. No, I just barely not. I mean, what if I sold you Milo's shield? There you go. Perfect. Awesome. Fantastic, actually. That is great. I consider that an absolute win. You know, I think I can now say with near full confidence, this feels the most Dungeons and Dragons the game has felt so far, right? Because the consistent walking back and forth from inside the dungeon, back to town, selling my stuff, buying new stuff, going back in the dungeon, 
finding what I missed it. It's very D&D, &D, and I'm not going to say that like it's a bad thing. Like, honestly, it would be very fun, I think, to play a D&D &D campaign with this, you know, campaign structure. By the way, um, I have no interest in doing any more random battles uh, while we go get the false idol, so... I'm just gonna use, uh... Peace. And I'm gonna get over there real quick, so I'll see you guys in a minute when I go get the false idol. I, I'm looking right at it, I know exactly where that is. At least I'm pretty certain. Alright, back in the cave. I really do not care. I'll fight them when we get to the latter half of the dungeon, but for the first half, I have no patience for it. All right, I think one or two more peace spells and we'll be in a spot where I don't mind combat anymore. And that's fine, I'll fight monsters. Skip the first one, go to the second one, head up and around. Last time, I just blitzed straight past because in my opinion, there was nothing good there. However, I believe that is where the false idol is. At the very least, it's the one I'm going to check first. So in theory, I could hit an immediate left and skip the spinner altogether. But if I take the spinner, it's actually going to be less of an MP sync for us. So I'm going to take the spinner. Then I loop, hello, then I loop back around, take a long hallway, here we go. Search, found the false idol, I was correct. Just walk backwards. Yeah, it took a lot of MP, but we got it. All right, now uh, hit me back up once we get to the uh, to uh, Jessa or whatever her name is over with the uh, the false idol thing. Jesus Christ! It's a lot of fucking wizards. What are my highest level spells? I have a blaze level three. It does. Well, let's see it. Let's see it. Can this kill everyone in one shot? Because if it can, we can move on quickly. Yes, it can. Masterfully done, Pyra. Hey, level 21. Nice. Awesome. All right, there she is. So now if we head over here, I'm going to use the false idol. Where'd you go? It's good to be free. What's the matter? You mean you tell me you ain't caught on yet? Here, take a good look. Fuji, now I'm free. I guess it's feeding time. Doppler. Okay. We're gonna cast quick. And you're gonna cast slow. You can ju you know the game was not ready for me to get a critical hit. 
Did I just see Milo get a revive spell? Oh, that's fantastic! That's gonna save us so much money! Where the fuck am I? I think I know where the fuck I am. We're gonna find out. If I turn right, and there is a well directly to my right, I know where I am. If there's not, I'm lost. I know exactly where I am. We're near the end of the dungeon. I'm not gonna use a healing spell because in theory, the end of the dungeon is dead ahead. We did it. I have done well. You have passed the trial of truth. If it be truth you seek, then step forward. We did it. We beat the trial of truth. That was brutal. I accidentally cast peace. That's fine. That was brutal, my guy. That one was rough. What's our current money situation? Uh, 2000. Not as high as it was before, but then again, we did some intermediate shopping trips. I'm going to heal up real quick. Oh. Oh. So after this is in theory the last of the four trials, the Cave of Wisdom. We'll see how that goes. Oh my god. That was so much. It was fun near the very tail end, and this is kind of starting to become a recurring thing about Shining the Darkness's dungeons. When it's fun, it's really, really fun. But it does not take a lot for the game to start pulling some serious bullshit and just pissing you off consistently. With just, you know, not very good decisions in my opinion. And I can tell you right now, just by looking at it, the Cave of Wisdom is going to be, in terms of physical layout, worse. We'll see about the monster situation. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. And I will see you next time for more Shining in the Darkness.